All right, folks, welcome to another Amulet video. We're going to be trying again the Elish Norn version of Amulet that I was experimenting with uh, last week. Hopefully this time around we will get to actually draw the Elish Norn at least once and see if it actually does anything. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm not going to go too deep into the deck list because uh, it just feel it just felt fine so i'm just gonna go straight to the games no time to waste uh, but i will actually uh, talk to you real quick about uh, the ways that you can support my content you can do so in a free way by just hitting that like and subscribe button that's always really appreciated if you are uh, if you would like to support my content for free you can do so just by using tcg player and meta traders as services with the, the links that you will find in the description down below you will be directly supporting my content with no extra cost to you and you will also find a 10 percent discount uh, for your first two months with meta Traders. So that's some, some good value on the way out as well. And finally, if you would like to support me directly, you can do so through Patreon, through direct donations with any donation of $30 or more. I will play any deck list of your choice in a video. And finally, uh, if you're interested in coaching, I also offer that as a service. So, uh, you know, send me a message and we can figure things out, of course. Uh, let's just play some matches, man. Let's just do it. Oh, wow. Are we, are we really going to be able to cast a Lishnorn here? Uh, this seems good. Uh, so we can go turn one amulet, turn two... Land, turn three Elish. Not bad. I guess it depends on what we're up against. I guess we can turn three Elish if we turn one the Gracer anyway. So probably better to do that. Although I guess it's actually better to go Amulet because... Uh, well, I guess we can just do that instead. Yeah, so let's just go turn one Gracer into Saga. And... Um, this means that if I ha if I find an Asusa, so what I was gonna say earlier is it's better for me to amulet on turn one because if I draw Asusa, I can Elish on turn two, which is uh, which is pretty neat. Uh, but just uh, what we have here is a pretty decent as is. We're gonna get to make a construct this coming turn, and then following turn we can choose whether we want to Elish Norn or just make another construct. Kitchen your Trime is what my opponent is doing over there, which could be a couple of different things. It could be Rhinos, it could be. Uh, well, there we go. It's going to be Fire Knight, so it's probably Creativity. Elash seems very strong against Creativity. Oh, no, it's actually Rhinos. Okay, so interesting. We're tapping the green source. Cool. Okay, well, here's an amulet. Does it resolve? It does. I guess there's no real reason to play out the Gracer here. I'm going to play out the Groot. So if we find Tolaria West next turn, we can, uh, we can do a bunch of things. One thing to think about is the fact that Elish doubles bounce land triggers so that can be awkward sometimes I'm imagining this is rhinos though it's not it's not 100% confirmed that that's the case hopefully we dodge blood moon if it is indeed rhinos because we obviously can't beat it here <laughs> so all right if they have rhinos we are kind of Fine. If they have Blood Moon, we lose on this spot. That's a Charlotte's Agent. Okay, so we play on. We play on. Let's see what we find here. Let's see what we find here. This, I imagine, is going to be the main deck Blood Moon version of Rhinos. I don't see any Blood Moons here. No Blood Moons revealed, but... Okay, so they actually have multiple answers to Elish Norn between Brace and Borrower and stuff. So does that mean that I'd rather set up a Titan here? I think... I think it does. So I can float mana, play Dryad. If I do that... So I guess... Wait, does Selection also double my untap triggers? Yeah, because this triggers whenever something enters the battlefield. So actually, this Selection actually doubles my mana. I hadn't even thought about that. So I get to go Expedition Map, play Dryad. But Dryad is actually minus one mana, so that's kind of awkward. So if I want to Elish Norn, I have to play it before. I, I have to get an amulet, sorry. So that's kind of awkward. Yeah, it's the only way. So I guess I'm going to, I guess, make a construct and get a second amulet. It's a little bit awkward, but I feel like this is the better play like it just gives me more possibilities for next turn so let's play here let's double some triggers let's some mana bounce play dryad and here we can play gracer to play 
Forest Tapped, and then play Sanctuary as it bounce land and cast Hellish. So play Forest, make some mana. And now again, this is going to be a little bit on the awkward side of things, <laughs> where Elishnorn is going to double. Like it's, it's going to net us effectively infinite mana. <laughs> More mana than we will be able to do with it, but we're going to end up with no lands in our in our uh, in, in in the battlefield. All right, your go. On the plus side, we have a ton of good draws here. We have a ton of great draws, so I can. Kind of freely block a rhino because there's not much they can do like um, they can have like double dead gone or like double fire ice or something like that but not much more besides that so they just pass a turn they did nothing i wonder if they're trying to like set up a big turn or like what's the what's the deal they caps we already saw stuff like bracing bore we saw fire and ice first mari command draw two and destroy target artifact that's fine. I don't think we care about that at all. I have no idea why they did this upkeep. Like, there's no reason to do this on my upkeep. No reason at all. Especially because they could have hit their land drop, right? If they're going to be drawing two, discarding two. Like, they missed the land drop right there. They, they could have hit it. Primeval Titan. Basic Forest. All right. Share two lands. Pass the turn back. Nothing to do here. Obviously, we don't have good attacks. Discarding Charlotte's Agent and Fire and Ice? Huh. I wonder what my opponent's plan is if they're discarding another Charlotte's Agent and they're also discarding Fire and Ice. I imagine it's going to include bouncing my Elish potentially on my next end step. And if they attack with the Rhino, I'm, I'm snapping off the block. Saga. Okay. Uh, I mean, it doesn't help me this turn. Gonna be a lot of help two turns from now. So if we manage to somehow... To somehow just play, continue playing this game where neither of us does anything. Sure, outburst. But there's no need to do that. Like, they should have kept the Charlotte's Agent and just play the Charlotte's Agent. It would have been two more power. Like, they, they just, it's not like they, the instant speed did anything at all. In fact, they could have saved the Violent Outburst to, like, double up with a Shock. And they could have, I go to block the Rhino and then they just double up with a Shock and kill my, kill my Elish Norn. So... Yeah, some kind of weird place from my opponent. Okay. I mean, I'm I'm definitely blocking here. And I guess I double block there. Sorry, not like that. So if, if we block like this, our Dryad dies. We get destroyed by the Bound spell. But if they do that, then I think protecting my life total matters a lot more than the Dryad. So I think I like this block they can like shock the construct but that that means they don't bounce my elish norm so that's fine i think so they they have something let's see what this is another prismari command to shock my construct okay so that's fine now they don't kill the dryad and we still soak up all the damage yeah i, I just don't think my opponent uh, i think they need to figure out what their plan is right now it just kind of feels like they're making plays and then f trying to figure out on the fly what those plays are actually going to equate to. But Summoner's Pact is game. Show me the counter spell. Okay. So I guess they could have subtlety. Uh, it's not a subtlety. All right. Triggers. Oh, we get multiple Crumble Investors triggers, dude. Oh, this is so sick. <laughs> we get double mana from Vestige, that's insane! <laughs> awesome, okay, so... Boseju, Engineer Explosives... Uh, Tile Tracker is interesting. And Elish Norn is also interesting. I think on the draw I don't like Elish Norn, on the play I do. The problem with Elish Norn is my opponent's very likely to drop an early, um, an early Blood Moon. And that is very, very bad for me. And not only is it very, very bad for me, but also it just blanks my Elish Norn on top of that. Elish Norn is only stopping Fury from my opponent. So it's kind of whatever. Like, I'm not a huge fan. And here we can cut Colossus in place of Tracker. Uh, Endurance, Beast Within. Beast Within, maybe. I don't think I want Forces. 
I don't, I don't think I want Beast Within either, but like Beast Within is the closest one of all the cards in my sideboard to making it to the main. As a, just another redundant ans a potential answer to, to Blood Moon. I think I'm keeping this. We have good mana, we have a basic. We get to go turn one amulet probably. Although I guess if we do that, we are not gonna get to turn to Azusa if it if gets forced. I think that's a fine risk to, to run into. One in place, yeah, they, they have Blood Moon. 100% have Blood Moon over there. All right, I'm gonna show them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have them show me, I mean. So play Amulet, pass it back. Okay, Tria Trium. We untap. That is a whole bunch of nothing. Not super stoked about how things are developing. Play land, play land. I guess I have all the mana that I could want, so I'm going to just play out the Gracer because if they do indeed have Blood Moon, it's going to be harder for me to play it next turn. I may want to for some reason. All right, let's, let's see that Blood Moon. We can go Sage it away, which is nice. There we go. Turn three Blood Moon. So now, uh, I guess we're going to lose. So we still have two more turns, I guess. But my top decks need to be Primeval Titan into Boseju. Or the other way around. I'll take the other way around as well. I will take the other way around as well. Uh, Primeval Titan. All right. Halfway there. Halfway there. So we're just going to, I guess, pass it back here. And again, the only way that we win is we, if we find exactly Boseju. So I'm not going to attack with Asusa because they have... <laughs> they're very, very clearly telegraphing that they have Iron Adverse. So... No surprises here, we see some forces, we see Racing Boar, these are, these are all cards that we expected. No crazy cyberling in there. So we're gonna take eight. Guess that we can take a chomp because it's free. And now we have to play, um, we have to draw Boseju right now. That's not Boseju. Do we have another turn? We actually may have another turn. So we're gonna play this as a chomp blocker. And if they don't have another outburst, maybe we have another turn. We block one of these, we take... Yeah, it's not enough. It's not lethal as is. So this is 13. So we die to Fire Nice, but that's fine. I don't think... I, mean, I think I'm going to need all of my mana next turn, so I don't think I want to... Even though I have another Asus, I don't think I want to throw an Asus in the garbage, because I think I'm going to need all the mana I can... Well, Sage or Bust. I guess Expedition mapping to Boseju could potentially do it. Okay, now it doesn't. <laughs> Alright, um, game three. Let's bring in the Beast Withins. Let's bring in the Beast Withins. Let's cut another Cavern of Souls. Actually, let's cut it. Let's cut, uh, bring back two Cavern of Souls. Cut at least two Sagas and one Garden. And go with this. Uh, so this hand is missing a lot of mana. So we're going to ship it. This hand is not the worst. It's not the worst. We're gonna keep it, and I think we're gonna bottom beast within, and I'm gonna try to find a bounce land, and that's going to give me the win. So here's a Gracer, and we're gonna play Rot Farm. This punishes me if I top deck exactly amulet, but I think it's still the right play to make. So I need to draw um, exactly Bounce Land this turn. And if I do and they don't interact with my Dryad, I'm going to get to play a Titan on turn 3. Because I have two untapped lands. So we have uh, 10 looks. We have 10 looks at turn 3 Titan. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Don't mind if I do. So now any untapped land also does it for me. Play Cavern on Giant. This also is a preemptive way to answer... Uh, Gracer, of course, getting in there. Uh, but um, this actually gives me a way to answer a Blood Moon, which is good for obvious reasons. Opponent says message received. <laughs> you're all right, opponent. You're all right. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. All right. Uh, Untap land does it. Um, what? Oh, thank you, opponent. My opponent says they appreciate all the content that I produce. Hope all is well. Thank you. All is great, opponent. Thanks to you. All right, what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Uh, oh, like, we're getting iced. Actually, ice is not 
that big of a problem here. Ice is not that big of a problem. Okay, well, that is great. So I can still Bosage you things to Dryad. So if my opponent goes Force into Blood Moon, we die. But there's nothing I can do about that. But as of right now, we're beating Blood Moon. Shardless. Okay. I hope they. I really hope that they don't have Force of Negation. Force of Negation would be kind of a beating. So I'm gonna respect. All right. Here's from Evil Titan. So here we have actually a bunch of options. Like if they have subtlety, yeah, they have subtlety. Okay. So definitely gonna be putting that on top. Now we do lose to Blood Moon. Definitely putting that on top. Subtlety evoked. Play that. We lose to Blood Moon. Nothing we can do about that, of course. And now we pay for upkeep. We have one, two, three, four. We still can't tighten. So we're going to take... We don't take lethal as is, however. We don't take lethal as is. We just block Charles Agent. And I guess that's it. They have fours as well. Well, now we are dead. <laughs> uh, actually, are we... We pay for back this turn, block shardless, block shardless agent, top deck the titan. Okay, so they, they just had everything. Yeah, um, yeah, this. <laughs> Not too much we could have done here. This was just, uh, this was just an absolute beating. We know we're drawing prime time. Prime time doesn't win, so yeah, we, we can't win. All right, lost uh, the first round. All right, what do we got here? Uh, turn one saga. Turn two T West. We're one short of prime time on turn three. I think that's fine though. I think that's fine. I think this is uh, like a robust enough hand that I think I'm okay keeping this. There's also the possibility I'm supposed to... Uh huh. I think I'm actually supposed to go for turn one Toleria West because by going turn one Toleria West, I am guaranteeing that I'm gonna have a Titan on turn four. So turn four atta uh, attacking Titan on the play seems seems decent. All right, punished, but <laughs> but it's fine. Um, so now we're gonna play, next turn we're gonna play Sanctuary and Bounce T West. And we really hope that we dodge Blood Moon. We're playing against a uh, Merc Tide most likely. And we are very interested in dodging Blood Moon. Put him fetches for basic, that's a bad sign. <laughs> If my goal is to dodge Blood Moon, my opponent fetching for a basic island is, is not the best sign. All right, so they beam a couple of lands and then they consider there. Another consider. Okay, so opponent's digging pretty pretty hard. They are tapping out though. So like if I find if I find a green source, any untapped green source or an amulet, I'm gonna be in really good. That's an expedition map. That is neither of those things and. It's not great. <laughs> it's it's not a particularly great draw. I guess it's not the worst though, because this can allow me to cavern of souls. So that is at least kind of nice. If we do get to that point, of course. Okay, opponent plays bubble. I'm gonna get a nice little DRC trigger. If they tap out for something like, I don't know, like iteration or whatever, we're gonna be in really, really good shape. They're tapping out for Merktide? Oh yeah. Yeah, this is good. This is real good. Yep. So they can't have DRC mana. Uh, sorry, Unholy Heat mana. So I think so. Yeah, okay. So we're, we're in very good shape here. Perfect. All right. So a couple of things we can do. We can pack for Asusa. We can pack for Gracer. If we packed for Azusa, what I actually find very interesting about packing for Azusa is that it, it allows me to play Boseju, but it means that I can't block the Merktide. So let's we're gonna float one mana. We're gonna play Amulet. I get find Amulet there. Um, now we're going to pact for Azusa, play Azusa. Play Rob Farm one time, two times, three times. So now we have six mana. We're gonna cast Prime Evil Titan. Cast Prime Time. Say yes. We're going to Bodos Garrison Slayer Stronghold. We're going to Haste Prime Time. 
Now we're going to bound stronghold. We're going to attack. And what we get to do now is we get to get... I guess we... No, no, we do. Yeah, so we get Boseju Bounce Land. Bouncing Garrison. We get to get Boseju Growth Chamber. This is now going to bounce Boros Garrison. Swing for eight. I doubt my opponent blocks, but if they block, I'm kind of fine with that. But this way, we actually get to beat Blood Moon, which is... Obviously, beating Blood Moon is quite exciting. All right, so opponent is taking the trade. Huh. Yep. Okay. So, those die. And second main phase, play Dryad. Play Rod Farm. And now, we bounce Boseju. So now we can't die to our Pact. We, ha we are guaranteed to be able to pay for Pact. My opponent has their work cut out for it. We are very widely ahead on board. We're sitting at 18, so even if they like express iteration and whatever, like we, we don't really care. If they don't force my Boseju, I get to Expedition Map for Cavern of Souls. So they hit Asusa, which is fine, I don't care about that. If they tap out, we do get to prime time, which is nice. Being in iteration. Okay, so this is fine now. I wonder if they have another... They do. Okay, so if they do have... If they do have another Merktide here, if they have exactly Merktide regent right now, we may get raced. Yeah, you want to attack first, opponent. There we go. So coming in for three, down to 15. And... Okay, so opponent does go for Merktide there. It's only a 6-6, six, six, and it took my opponent off Delirium to cast it, so maybe we can have enough time. I definitely want to Cavern. Yeah, I mean, we could Garden, Scopy Amulet. What, does that do anything? Not really. Yeah, we're just going to get Caverns. And the good thing is that we don't have to play out the Caverns. We can play out Stronghold this turn, which is nice. <laughs> That's a terrible top deck. Um, so we're going to... Play out Stronghold, and we can pack for Dryad this turn. If we pack for Dryad, what does that do for us? Allows me to block DRC. Take six down to nine. Next turn we get to transmute and do everything, but we struggle versus Pact of Negation. Okay, I think we just pass. It really is brutal the fact that we do some home. The, the drawing sun home there is so bad because it means that we actually cannot. Like if my opponent, even if they do, even if they don't have the counter spell, we can't actually kill them on one attack. So that's like that's terrible. That's that's so so bad. Like th this was potentially a game losing draw. Okay, so they exile island, and they have two cards in hand. This is nine. So I guess I have to draw Asusa, Asusa specifically, and I can't beat Counterspell. Yeah, that doesn't do it. Here's some respect. They don't have... Oh, okay. Well, never mind then. We can just cultivate her. So play this. We're going to name a Beast and cast this one. Triggers. That's a trigger. That's a trigger. That's a trigger. Vesuva, copy... I think I'm gonna copy Boros, so I can double strike. Play a land, play a land, play a land, play another land. Alright, this was cool. So now we choose the Poseidon, and we make a sizable amount of mana. So stack my triggers. So my opponent did not actually have... Okay, they just concede. So they didn't actually have the counter spell for the pact, so I'm assuming they don't have counter spell. All right, that worked out. Turns out my opponent just had nothing. Elishnor seems pretty bad in this matchup. I do like this member. I do like, obviously, Boseju, Cavern, Bog. I'm going to cut at least three sagas, maybe all four. I want trackers. I want endurances. I think I want to cut one Micah in Garden. Uh, Gracer is great. Asusa is the worst of the bunch. Cultivator sucks. And I don't think I'm into Beast Within. Like, Beast Within is fine. My opponent showed me... Oh, I want Explosives. My opponent showed me um, the 2-drop. The Bird Lawyer. So, 
I think uh, engineering explosives is fine. I think I'm going to cut a map, a, a, an amulet, sorry, and I think I'm just going to cut, cut another garden. It's between cutting another garden there and cutting the last, the last, um, what's his name? The last uh, saga. Uh, this hand is pretty great, actually. This is kind of what we're looking for. I would love to see... I would love, love to see Bounce Lands. Bounce Lands are our best draw right here. That one. That's our best draw. Grazer. Consider. Uh, I think we bog here. I think we just bog. Pass the turn. Interesting. I think we're going to go for Cavern on Human and say go. This way we get to guarantee that we get at least one, one clue. This also means that we get to play around... Uh, we get to play around Blood Moon very nicely here. Opponent misses a land drop. Okay. Ha! Well, that's hella interesting. So... How? Oh, this is... This is wild. Okay, so... I think we're going to play out Amulet here. And I'm playing it off of the Cavern because this is the, the land that I'm going to bounce. I think this is going to get countered. Which it does. And now I get to play Sanctuary. So my goal here is to... Play this tracker while holding up Boseju so I don't lose to blood. That's my goal right here. So now we growth chamber, bounce bog, I guess. We just don't even play the tracker. Opponent could have dressed down for what's worth, but I think playing this playing the slow game favors me. We only get punished by specifically um what's his name? We get punished by specifically um Mags of the Moon. Max of the Moon is kind of beating if this doesn't work out. So they finally found the fetch land. Now that I imagine they're gonna play the Blood Moon, I just get to Bosage with three blue. Yep. <laughs> As I was saying, we get punished by specifically that Magus of the Moon. Nothing else matters. He's the only card that matters here. Yep. That'll do. That will do. Perfect. <laughs> uh that's brutal, man. That is brutal. It's literally the only card in my opponent's entire deck that matters there. We can still draw, I guess, a basic forest. But it's not looking good. Like, it's not... I guess I can draw this member. Like, if I draw this member, we just dismember the Magus and we kind of move on with our lives. Just block the Magus there. I imagine they have the Shock. They have Unholy Heat. That's what that attack was about, yeah. This also allows them to shred... Okay, so now we're drawing towards specifically this member, I think. I think this member is the only card that matters at this point. <clears throat> yeah, that doesn't do it. So we're taking two, five, seven, minus four, and I, I, I die. So even if I draw this member at this point, we just uh, die to... Um, we just take too much damage. Or we can't win. Game number three... Uh, that sucked, man. Like, we had, we had everything locked up, I'm playing it carefully, and then it's just like, there's only one card that matters, and they have exactly that card. That's brutal. Um, I don't think I want Beast Within, though. Like, Beast Within is just way too clunky, I think, in this matchup. I mean, I, I would play it. The problem is, I don't think Beast Within is better than any of my other cards. That's the problem that Beast Within has here. These are my like my 62 and 60 my 61st and 62nd card. Like I'd rather have all of these cards before Beast Within. Even Expedition Map, just having access to it's an extra basic. A bad basic, but uh, I don't think this hand is good enough. It's just way too slow. It gets host by too many cards. Uh, this one is good though. I do like this one. So keep this. And I think we bottom endurance. So, turn one, Cavern on Giant. We're gonna play Amulet. Now my opponent better have the the Shock, I guess. I'm not gonna kill this DRC. Oh, that's a good draw. So, I'm going to do this here. Play Asusa Land, I think, as I go. If, I really wish I had another bounce land. Bounce land would have been a really good, a really good thing to have here. Spire Bluff Canal, lock, no attacks. Okay. Hmm. What are we doing here? So we have eight mana. 
we have eight mana. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna if I play out Boseju, I get Blood Moon. That is so bad for me. So I guess we just play Growth Chamber a couple of times and then see what my opponent does. So we just play Growth Chamber twice. See what my opponent does here. We can get Dress Down. We would lose to Dress Down. We would lose to Dress Down. So they do have the counter spell and they've been a Merc type. So now I guess I'm just going to transmute here. Uh, maybe, maybe, I think I should, I think I have to play out the bossy. Yeah, now I'm now I'm forced to transmute this turn. I actually messed that up. I think I have to accept that I lose to Blood Moon, and I have to. Yeah, I think we just. I, I need to draw another bounce land if I do this. Yeah, I think I just have to do this. Just have to pass the turn back. I messed that up. I think I was supposed to. I was supposed to play out the Boseju. I was supposed to play out the Boseju and accept that I just lose to Blood Moon, to actual Blood Moon, because I'm losing to Blood Moon here, right? But I can beat Magus though. Like Magus, we don't care about. Magus is fine. Magus is whatever. Nice. So what I'm gonna do here? I'm just gonna play out both things. So now we pass the turn. And I want to give my opponent this false sense of security because I want to encourage them to tap out. Yeah, so I want them to just like play whatever they have. Yeah, this is perfect. So now they tapped out. We make sure that we just yield anti land step. And then we can untap and we can blow them out. I guess they could find an answer to the to the Asusa, which would be pretty bad. Spiral of Canal. So we dismember now. I guess there's no reason to take these two from the Magus. We untap, play a land, blow the mana, play another land, another mana. So they could have an holy heat. That is kind of a big problem, but I don't think I can beat that realistically speaking. Can I beat an holy heat? <sighs> can I beat an holy heat? So this is the easy part, and now comes the hard part, which is what do we do? So if we go, f so can I afford to not haste? Is what I'm, if, is what I'm wondering here. Can I go for Bojugabog plus plus Tolera West? Like if I do that, if I go for Bojugabog plus Tolera West, I slow my opponent's clock. I slow my opponent's clock. I get to just play the Gracer just to play it out, just to block, then my opponent's forced to hit right now. They kill my Primeval Titan, and then at that point, next turn I'm stuck paying for Pact, but I lose to Blood Moon, which I can't beat, so it's not worth playing around. Um, if I if I play around Blood Moon, I can't beat Unholy Heat, so I think I'd rather play around Unholy Heat than another Blood Moon effect. The question is, do I... I think I have to. I think I need to have access to a bounce land in hand in order to win this game. Otherwise, things become really, really awkward. So I think I'm gonna go for for it here, and we may very well get blown out. We may very well get blown out here. Uh, we at least what we can do is we can play around. We can play around actual blood moon. So that's nice. They don't have the heat. That's huge. Absolutely huge. So now I can actually go for Bojugibok for sure, and then Tolera West. And at this point, if I go for Bog T West, we can beat uh, we can beat uh, Blood Moon, but we lose to Second Magus. Or I can go Bog plus Basic Forest. I think I'm gonna go for Bog plus Forest. I think I'm gonna go for Bog plus Forest, because my opponent did not have the heat, right? Otherwise, they would have heated the Primeval Titan right now. Sure, they can go like Iteration into Find the Heat and Enable Delirium, because they have double DRC. So they can probably get Delirium, put Delirium together very, very quickly. But I think this is the better way to do this. Yeah. Yeah, they, they kind of already have Delirium already again. <laughs> but now we can actually potentially fight Magus. We can actually fight Magus here. Interesting game. Interesting game. Opponent beans and tops. That's brutal. So whatever's on top of their deck is good, which is bad news for me. 
But regardless, I'm going to grace her to bounce Bujibok here, which allows me to beat, again, actual Blood Moon, but not Max. Still think this is very much worth doing. So at this point, nothing we can do. We just have to, to hope that things line up in a good way for me. Okay, so the Lyrium is already online, so we just have to dodge on Holy Heat. If we dodge on Holy Heat, we're going to probably win. And my opponent has a bunch of looks <laughs> to find it, so it's not looking great. It is most certainly not looking great. We get to pay for Pact. Okay, so they, they did find the Heat. So they get to pay for Pact, and they do get to... If I find from Eagle Titan, I can cast it. But it needs to be exactly from Eagle Titan. It can't be anything else. Like, I can't transmute for it or anything like that. Do I want to soak up 3 damage here, go down to 10? I think so. I think I want to take the chump while I can. It's bad if they go island into Merktide, but... Okay, so now we pay for Pact. And we really, really have to draw a Primeval Titan. Prime time? Well, that's interesting. That is really interesting. We actually get to attack too, now that I think about it. So here's Endurance. <laughs> Endurance you. If they have another unholy heat, well, they have another unholy. So this at least forces them to start to like play their stuff before. They did like whatever the drawing is good though, which is bad for us. But okay, so I don't think it's worth doing there anyway though. To prevent my opponent from merc tiding. Asusa gets to get in there. And at this point, we're drawing towards... I guess we are in exactly Primeval Titan territory. Heat Asusa. That's so aggressive. Because they're trying to get me dead. Oh, they just have actual blood. Okay. So we're dead then. <laughs> we are indeed dead. We're just dead very slowly. Expedition map. That is an answer to Blood Moon. That is an answer to Blood Moon. Dashed monkey. Brutal, dude. All right. I lose. I could have also, like, uh, mapped for... Oh, never mind. No, we, we couldn't have done anything. So we, we, we our only plan was to just map for Voseju and blow it. Yeah, I mean, this is why Merktide is such a bad matchup, right? You, you can have stuff to go your way, but, like, you just need so much stuff to go your way. And it's, like, your opponent doesn't need stuff to go their way because they're cantripping and they're, like, they have DRC triggers. So, yeah. Bad matchup is bad. We, we, we got two terrible matchups in a row. It's pretty brutal. Round number three, playing against Giganta. I think we can keep this. It's a little bit on the odd side of things, but I think it's probably worth keeping. Playing against Tron most likely here. We can go turn one amulet, turn two copy amulet, which is nice. Yeah. And my opponent did not keep turn, turn three Tron, which is just a bad keep for them, I assume. Here's an amulet. So if we draw... <laughs> how many times have you been hurt, opponent? Have you ma How many times have you been hurt? Um, to be honest, this seems kind of reasonable to me. <laughs> this, is, this is the equivalent of the mill whenever I see a mill, you know? And I'm just like, I, I, I have better things to do with my life than, than lose this match over the next 15 or 20 minutes. So yeah, this, uh, this was funny. Round number four. Turn one amulet, turn two dryad. Cavern of Souls. I think we can do better than this. I think we can definitely do better than this. And this is much better. So great keep. I'm going to bottom cultivator. Be done with this, we can go turn one, Gracer into Saga, and go from there. Play Cavern on Beast. Here is a Grazy Boy. And play a Saga and send it over there. Giganta could really be so many, th so many things. Uh, it could be some red deck, black red it looks like. Okay. Monkey. All right. Untapped land would be fine. We did not get there. So we're just going to play out this Sanctuary, bounce, and say go. We're going to get a Construct next turn. So this is, I would imagine this is Shadow, if I had to guess. Okay, it is Shadow. Look, Another bad matchup, by the way. 
another pretty bad matchup for us. So, yeah. Damn, terminate. Terminate your gracer. <laughs> Man, that would have been a great draw. I hope I don't get Thoughtseize here, but... All right. Primeval Titan. So... We packed for Gracer and we prime timed. So this is good now. Uh, I guess what we should do is we should summon our spec right now because my opponent could spell Pierce. So we're gonna summon our spec for Gracer. And now that that resolved, play land. And we're getting Gracer because it plays around Fatal Push, it plays around um, so many things. So here is Growth Chamber. And load some mana, play my Gracer, and once again, here we get to play prime time, we get to attack, and then we definitely make, need to make sure that we are good enough, good to pay for pact, but my opponent does not have Delirium, and they can't, they actually cannot have a way to kill my Titan here, so we are pretty much good to go. So Grixis Shadow, uh, we definitely like Explosives, we do not like Cultivator Colossus. We like these members, we like tireless trackers and endurances. I once again think this is very much not an Elishnorn matchup, which is sad. <laughs> Looks like it's gonna be yet another league where we have not seen the mother of machines make an, make an appearance. I guess it did in the first game for what's worth. We, we learned that Elishnorn lines up somewhat okay versus Ryan. Um, that is obviously game one because we're gonna be cutting it after game two, <laughs> for game two. And so there's Vesage, we're gonna be cutting two sagas, one ga uh, two gardens, I guess. That seems fine. And then we can cut one Asusa, one amulet, and maybe one pact. I definitely want all gracers. I guess we can actually cut map in this matchup because um there's no there's no land that I'm interested in going to get. Like obviously it's 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 just having it in your deck gives you access to certain lines that are otherwise not possible. So it has that going on for it. But okay, knowing that we're playing against Shadow, I am a little bit more incentivized to keep a hand like this. Namely a hand that just doesn't really care that much about Thoughtseize. So now we're gonna get to this member monkey on one, which is nice. And I wanna play around spell here. So Bubble, target me. They know about the summoners back now. Just main phase dismember this thing and move on with our lives. Another monkey is bad. <laughs> it's pretty bad for us. Uh, Mycosin Gardens is also a pretty bad draw. I'm gonna play Sanctuary, Bounce Forest, and say go. Uh, but this is not great. I mean, the, the good thing is that they missed the land drop. And they drew a bubble, which is also good for me because, you know, if they had something... Like, they could, they would have played that bubble last turn, right? The problem now is that they're going to have access to black mana thanks to this monkey hitting, meaning that uh, Thoughtseize is, is now an option. All right. It's pretty good. That is pretty good. So let's play Dryad. Going to play Land, play Gracer. And now monkey's blanked. Minor misstep. Wow. They minor misstep knowing that I have summoners packed in hand? That's wild. That is crazy. So now they terminate the Dryad. Oh, Iteration. Okay, that's probably worse. They also have Delirium for what's worth. Also, I'm now just realizing that I should have played a Bounce Land as my second, as my last land drop, because now I, even if this Dryad survives, I cannot. Cast Titan next turn. What I can do, however, is Pact for Tracker or Pact for Endurance, both of which are interesting options. And Holy Heat. I definitely don't want F6 because if my opponent has Inquisition, we can Pact for Primeval Titan. Hmm. Do I want to Pact right now? I don't think so. Something? Something good here? Okay, it's not bad. So let's play Sanctuary, Bouncing, Micah's and Gardens, and pass it back. So there's some good stuff here about this situation, which is the fact that my opponent is not that close to killing me. We still have five turns. Uh, they are getting a lot of 
value from their monkey, but we now have double primeval type, expressive iteration. Okay, so my opponent's can't trip in like DRC was sexiled. Wow, okay, I don't see. Okay, there we go, that's a land, that's bad. Crack Delta, what do you got here, opponent? What are you gonna do? So if they have Dress Down, that's bad for me, I guess. So let's play out the Saga, and I'm just gonna jam this Primeval Titan here. It's possible they have, I mean, they have something like a Holy Heat, but I was expecting Dress Down there, honestly. Uh, so let's go get Bojugabog for sure. And then the other card would be, I guess, another Toleria West. Bojugabog, you. No Unholy Heat. That's good. What is their hand? What is my opponent's hand right now? They didn't have Terminate. Super weird. I think it's likely they have another minor misstep because they were so quick in minor misstepping the Gracer when they already knew about the Summoner's Pact. Shredder. Shredder's fine. Thoughtsies. And I wish we could Pact for Bayloth here. Just a classic and healthy play. Good old Pact for Bayloth. Unfortunately, not an option. The good thing though, obviously they take the pack there. The good thing is that they're not particularly close to answering these primeval type. They're down to three cards. We're untapping with prime time. Like I, I don't actually hate my position right here. We can bog my opponent again if we need to. Well, Seiju doesn't really do anything. But I'm definitely serving here. Swing for six. And I'm gonna get, I guess, I guess I want to get Stronghold and Valakut. This makes my Dryad a better top deck. This makes my Dryad a better top deck. I can already activate Valakut if I need to. And I can block the, uh, the, the monkey. It's nice that we don't have to cast any spells here into the Ledger Shredder. Maybe the extra Boseju wasn't necessary. I was thinking of Alpine Moon. That was the reason to bring in the extra Boseju, but I'm not sure if my opponent has that. So they just take the six. You can't trust me on this turn, so I'm just gonna play out Gardens and say go. Fetch down to three. Imagine it's gonna be a tap land. And now we're gonna take two, three, four, five. So the question is, am I gonna make a construct and attempt to block the monkey. Wow. My opponent with, with the YOLO and Holy Heat. <laughs> with the YOLO and Holy Heat, hope I flip this off of the, the DRC trigger. You love to see it. You love to see it. And it wor it didn't work. Never mind. Okay, okay. <laughs> I almost freaked out. I almost freaked out right there. But no, it looks like it didn't work. So what they can do now is they can play another instant in response to the heat, trigger the shredder, and enable and holy hit that way. They also get another look with DRC. All right, so that's what's going on. That's what my opponent is doing here. Call against command, is that lethal? Discard a card, which doesn't do anything, so that's fine. Two damage to any target, which doesn't do anything, so that's also fine. So this is one, two, three, four, five. Maybe up to six, no, just five. So I guess we're gonna discard Boseju here. Titan down, Titan down. So this is three, four, five, six, seven if my opponent attacks. I'm definitely going to attempt to block because we have lethal regardless next turn because we can just haste uh, the construct we make. So we lose to Lightning Bolt, but we beat everything else, I think. Shadow. Um, do we beat that? Uh, yes, because I played around this because I'm a genius. I mean, now we really beat it, but like the play here is transmute. Um, yeah, the play here is we transmute, make a construct, I guess, because it's free. Then we get amulet. Now we play a bounce land. Now we transmute, bounce there, transmute for summoner's pact, summoner's pact. For Dryad, Bala could be. And yes, I could have definitely cast the Primeval Titan here, which is better, but I just wanted to show my opponent that I didn't need to draw the Primeval Titan, you know? I just wanted them to know. Just wanted them to know that I had them dead already, you know? <laughs> See you next round.
Last round, a uh, solid hand, I guess. We have any land gives us Titan mana. Yeah, this, this, this hand is fine. I don't love the fact that my bounce land is Boros Garrison, but it's fine. Uh, we have enough lands so that we can draw it on two. Even, and, and I this way, by playing Gardens here, I get to save the bounce land in hand in case I draw exactly Amulet. And then we get to, to really go off, and I guess we just win on turn three. That's the case. City of Brass. That's not a land you see every day. Damn. Tome Scour. Okay. That's kind of the nut draw there. Uh, and I guess I now got punished for my, for my line. Brutal. <laughs> okay. I got, got punished for not playing this stuff earlier. The good thing is that we have a we have a good block, like we, we have a very real board state. Opponent gets to dredge loam, but that's not that bad for us. That's Dark Blast, Cathartic Reunion. Any end up land that I win on the spot. So actually I think I play around Dark Blast. So I'm just gonna block with one of these. I do like just, you know, throwing the Gracer under the bus because it's not gonna be doing anything, really. Maybe they have like blood gas and stuff, but they're not gonna be hasty unless they find more stuff. So what is just loaming here getting foothills? Looks like and I go oh, reunion, that's a lot worse. Okay, so they get Alright, we found an imp. Okay, but that was not a widely good thing there. Uh also we drawn on top land, so now we just we Summoner's Pact. Primeval Titan. So now we just get Valakut and uh, Tolera West, and I think we kill. I think we just kill the dudes. If the dudes are dead, I can't lose. I don't. So I guess my opponent could, uh, they could dredge into exactly conflagrate, and then I would be in trouble because I'm stuck paying for Pact this coming turn. Crip and chill. That's just not fast enough. And now, I guess if they have a way to draw cards for one mana, if they have another tome, if they go land tome scour into conflagrate, it's just not, it's just not good enough. So now we win. <clears throat> Opponent plays stomping ground tapped, and I think that's it. They can't kill primeval titan with the stuff they have. They can ox. They can put a lot of power into play, and then untap and die. It is Ox. Dredge away opponent doesn't matter. They just they just don't have enough chills to close the game out. I guess that there's a possibility that they have enough blockers. So this is hmm. I mean, now we now we're good to go. Now we should have enough. Um, because all of these enter tapped. But I was gonna say like if they have four toughness, that means that they take four here. Then we can get how many triggers? So this is green, two, and another green mana. Cultivator Colossus, okay. Um, that one we're not gonna need. So copy Valakut. And I guess it's better to like go at the ox and go face here. And we're gonna get 18 triggers plus the six from the Primeval Titan. So this should be, we still have one more land drop here. So we're gonna get any bounce land and I guess I mean it just doesn't matter, just another bounce land. <clears throat> Send all of these triggers to face. That's 12 damage. Bounce that. We have one extra land drop. Good block opponent. Good block. Good block. Three to that and three to your price mail again, because I don't like. Alright. Uh game number two things get much better. <laughs> uh, I, this is always so funny against Stretch. Like, you win game one like that, and then things get dramatically better for you for games two and three. Um, Dredge has always been a really good matchup. Another non Elish non matchup. This is so sad. Like, another entire league, another full league, and we are still not. We're still not able to just crack the Elish norm code, you know. <laughs> uh, 
uh, where are my mirror matches, right? Like, where are my mirror matches? Why don't I get paired against Elementals? Like, those are the decks that I want to face and really see Elish Norn do her thing. Um, but yeah, we definitely want the extra Boseju because my opponent can have um, Leyline of Sanctity. Uh, the, the, the savvy uh, dredge players will bring in Leyline of Sanctity against Amulet because it blanks both Endurance and uh, Bujuka Bog and potentially even Tormal Script. If that's a card that somebody still put it in their decks for whatever reason. Um, anything else I want? Not really. I could consider Beast Within because of that reason that I just said. But I think I, I think the land is just better. Okay. I think I'm keeping this. I think I'm keeping this. I can go... I can go turn one Saga. Turn two Gracer. Saga. And take it from there. Then turn three, we play Triad, we do we do nasty stuff. My opponent did not get a good tomes. Oh dude, really? Am I am I really top decking an amulet there? Deck, why do you why do you not want this this match to be fair, deck? Tell me. Opponent hit no dredgers. <laughs> they only hit an ox that they don't have enough cards for, so they still need more enablers. Gemstone mine into this is a removal spell for amulet, or my opponent just drawing some more? Okay. They actually do have one dredger here. Maybe that can get the ball rolling. Or not. They are gonna get double priced amalgam. So that's I guess not nothing. That is most certainly not nothing. That's a gracer though. So now we get to go Growth Chamber, float some mana, bounce itself, play Dryad, play Gardens, make a and, and I'm doing this because I act, I actively want the blockers, so I, I that's why I'm playing. I'm actually I actively want the blocker, and I actively want the the Ursa Saga in play. The question is now, do I play the second one? Because the second one represents plus one or plus three mana next turn. Because what I can do is I can Microsoft Gardens copy Amulet, then I have one land drop. I I, I find um. I find uh, Expedition Map off of this Saga. I have one mana floating, I have one land drop, four mana, that is eight. Yeah, we, we hold on to the Gracer for next turn. We definitely hold on to the Gracer. Opponent just takes a natural draw there. And the Ox is still not online because my opponent got back their, their Amalgams, so... Thoughtsies. Boo! Boo! My Grazy Boy. Gonna need a little bit more than that, opponent. Gonna need a little bit more. Is this some ox action? Alright, so they, they are going for ox here. This is a little bit awkward though, because now I am now in a situation where I actually cannot kill them this coming turn. I don't actually have enough to lethal. And my opponent still fails to find they still fail to find a dredger. Kind of unlucky, honestly. Here we're gonna we have a nice block right there. No need to play around Dark Blast because my opponent doesn't have anything left. <sighs> Triggers go on the stack. What do I want to do here? I can float a mana. If I float a mana, I can copy here, get um, get Expedition Map. Play. I have four nine mana, so I'm two mana short of going off with Expedition Map. I, I think this is still the play though. Just copy here. Find map. Play land, and I guess we're gonna make a dude. Do I just? I mean, I don't think I need more mana now, so I kind of want to just replace Saga here. This may be wrong. This may be wrong, but I think I kind of want to do this. So it gives me a little bit more value. I don't need more amulets. I'm good to go on that front, and Expedition Map allows me to tutor for. T West, which is the missing piece. And my opponent's dead next turn regardless. But what this does is this makes things much better for me if for whatever reason um my stuff dies in some way or another. Be it my you know my dryads or whatever. Yeah, this hand this hand ended up being a little bit clunky. I guess I could have also bogged last turn. I don't think that that matters though. Uh, I do. I actually do not want to block there, but I'm definitely going to block those. Take four. 
down to 10. But I don't want to have my Dryad die to uh, Dark Blast. Yep, that Dark Blast. <laughs> the funny thing is I was probably going to crack Expedition Map anyways, like whether, whether my... Uh, whether my opponent did that or not, because the construct just doesn't matter. So the fact that my opponent just did that, it kind of worked out for me. Another ox. I think they already exiled one thing, right? They already exiled one chill. Yeah, so even if they flip all the remaining chills, it's not going to be good enough. So they imp, and they find one chill. And they loam. Man, like this, their deck just this did not cooperate this time around. Their deck really did not help them at all. <laughs> Things just did not work out for them. All right, so now we have infinite mana. I mean, we don't have infinite mana, but we have all the mana that we need. And my opponent does not have all the life total. Our deck continues to like not deliver, but it already delivered. It's just a matter of execution, going through the motions. Oh, transmute, summoner's pact is... Can I actually kill them here though i'm gonna have two lands in play i get oh i get valakut stronghold and then yeah well, I, I i kill them yeah I, this is this is fun um i guess i'm just going to make some green here just gonna just out here making some green as primeval titan say yes valakut put some triggers on the stack get some opponents dead float red white haste prime time and tap um, I think this is fine. So we attack with everything. Balakut is fine, I think. Uh, Vesuva and Bodo Scare. Vesuva copy Balakut. Balakut Ox. Balakut Face. Oh, I forgot to get. Oh, I forgot to get the double strike land. Whoops. Um, I thought I was getting. <laughs> that was just a brain fart. I thought I was getting the double strike land and I. <laughs> well, I actually did not do the math for this then. <laughs> because I definitely thought that I was getting Sun Home. And whoopsies. I I think this may be lethal as well. It's late over here. <laughs> Forgive me, it's late over here. Um Wow, that was that was a big punt. My opponent goes to one now? And I die on the crackback. <laughs> Dude, I die on the crackback. This is wild. This is absolutely wild. Wait, no, 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 you're not dead. I, I misclicked. <laughs> my opponent says, GG's pleasure to play against you. Again, I guess my... <laughs> I guess my, my, my Jedi mind tricks were so strong. <laughs> My Jedi mind tricks were so, so strong. I mean, I appreciate Jeremy because I, I, I messed it up there pretty badly. But um, but yeah, that was uh, that was rough. Like, my, my opponent was kind to concede there because... Oh, I guess this is 10. Never mind. Oh, we were good. We were good. Never mind. Never mind. Erase everything. It, this is much later than I think it is for me. <laughs> Damn. The late, late night amulet did not work out for me on that last round, huh? <laughs> but uh, yeah. Um, Elish Norn fails to show up once again, but this time around, it is a little bit different, right? Because we cut it every matchup, <laughs> every single matchup. We just sided out Elish Norn. We did get to play it against Rhinos on the very first game, and then never again. We never saw it again, but we saw how narrow it is. So after playing the game, I this this league, sorry. I'm kind of drawing the conclusion that this is not a card that you want to have access to in your main deck. Like, it just doesn't do enough there. And uh, as much as the memes are strong, I'm not going to argue with that, right? Like, the fact that you get... In that match that we did cast Elishon, we did get double Primeval Titan triggers, right? Because we really needed that, apparently. Also, like, double Cultivator trigger. Like, that would be insane. Uh, but uh, from a real perspective, in terms of just win the game, right? Um, or like, just build your deck the proper way, I mean, Elish Norn is kind of not doing it. Um, it's not, it doesn't really matter, like, it, the, the mana base was fine, like, we didn't really struggle too much in terms of 
the mana base adaptations that we did so you know adding the sanctuaries adding the vestige like that didn't hurt you know what i'm saying like that didn't that didn't hurt kind of at all it's just a matter of the slots that it's taking up could be used on something else and even something like an explore will be better overall just on on your average on your average matchup an explore will do more to give you wins than the, the copies of Alashnon will. I could entertain the possibility of inserting metagames to play this in your sideboard, uh, but at that point, it's just like, what, what is the real likelihood that you see it often enough to be worth it? At that point, isn't it better? Like, is, isn't it kind of the same as Emrakul? Like, you know, the Emrakul, the Promise End slot that we used to have in the past that was kind of the, the four-color Yorion uh, Trump card and... Is this really better than that? I don't think so. So at that point, what is really the point? The mirror. The, the mirror would be the point. So if you want to throw like a couple of Elish Norths in your cyber to, to tech against the mirror, like sure, whatever. Um, that card is probably unbeatable in the mirror, but that, I mean, you could just be playing some Force of Vegas instead, and that card is also pretty good in the mirror. So uh, take it however you want. Um, this league was uh, enlightening in that sense, I may give it another shot for the memes, but uh, I, I'm kind of off it from a competitive standpoint. You know, like Elish Norn has successfully earned Sakama status, except that it's, it's, this is the best Sakama that we've had ever, probably. So <laughs> we, we already have Sakama status for Elish Norn. I'm sorry, Elish Norn. Uh, I know that you are like an impressive Praetor and everything, but you're not amulet material. Denied. Uh, this was fun though, hopefully you enjoyed it, um, that's gonna be it for me, I'll see you in the next video folks, uh, please if you like to support my content you know what to do, so I'm not gonna say it again, but uh, hope you have a fantastic rest of your day wherever you're at, see you in the next one, bye bye.